Welcome to the bike show. We come to you today from Bavarian Motorcycles, the famous BMW dealership in Centurion. And today they've got a demo day on these brand new models, the S1000XR and the R1200RS, which is convenient because Matt and Harry were just down in Durban for the launch of these two models. We're already in August of 2015 and it's been about, what, three, four months since a new BMW was launched. So uh, to make up for it, we've got two brand new ones for you now. Yeah, both in what seem to be a very similar segment, sport tourers, that type of thing. You have been assigned this little beauty, Harry. This is the R1200 RS. It's kind of the spiritual successor to the old R100 RS, but way back in the 80s, late 70s. It's the new liquid-cooled boxer twin engine in a touring-type chassis and clothing. And what have you got? Well, I've got another version of BMW's inline four-cylinder motor. We've had the S1000 double R. We all know about that. It's a class-leading superbike. After that came the S1000 single R, which is a class-leading naked bike, basically whipped the fairing off the superbike. And now we have got the S1000 XR, which BMW tell me this is an adventure sport. The X stands for what? I have no idea, but where's the adventure? I see road tyres. I see a bit of a beak. There is a beak. And apparently the riding position is very GS-ish. Is but, it? But um, adventure sport, I really don't think so. Not with proper rubber like this. What I'm looking forward to are some proper back roads. And uh, whilst I was stuck to the, the roads of South Africa to, uh, to test this little beauty here, you went somewhere a little more exciting, yes, didn't you? Yes, well, I think you need to concentrate on your riding today because I've done mine already. It was uh, yeah, somewhere unexotic like Bavaria in 40-degree heat. So uh, I'll tell you what, kit it up. You start riding first. I'm going for a kip. <laughs> I'll start riding then. The R1200 RS has some big boots to fill. This is a BMW that harked back to the days when the German company wasn't about to surrender to the Japanese onslaught in the sports motorcycle market and came up with the R90S, the sporty boxer twin engine model. Following on from that was the R100 RS, a full-fared version that retained the sportiness of the R90 but added long-distance practicality. In essence, it was the first sports tourer and formed the blueprint for every BMW since. As with the R90 and the R100 RS, the new R1200 RS shares much with the naked R1200R, that's a lot of R's, released earlier in 2015. The frame, engine, suspension, wheels and instruments are all the same and adds a half fairing to justify the sport touring label, although quite why a full fairing means a bike is any less sporting is beyond me. As with all modern BMWs, the electronics package is significant and illustrates just how far we have travelled since those 1970s BMWs, impressive as they were in those days. Nowadays we get, and I quote from BMW's press release, ABS, ASC, rain and road riding modes, riding mode pro with dynamic traction control featuring banking detection, automatic stability control for increased handling safety when accelerating, hot water bottle and autopilot. Ah, uh, OK, maybe the last two aren't strictly accurate, but they do illustrate how far manufacturers such as BMW have gone to stop the bike of your dreams biting you on the bum under spirited acceleration or braking. In short, they're almost foolproof. Does that mean the R1200 RS is boring? In a word, no. This is a motorcycle of incredible ability, poise and comfort. The reach to the bars is surprisingly long, giving a feeling of a very roomy bike and a long and therefore stable wheelbase. The engine is the now familiar liquid-cooled version of the Boxer Twin that we've seen in the GS, the GS Adventure and the aforementioned R1200R, and is a peach, at once smooth and punchy. So, this is a bike to remind all those die-hard fans that BMW hasn't forgotten about them and that they are still making motorcycles the way they always did. And there's nothing wrong with that. As Harry rides off into the distance on the RS, it's time for my daydream about the XR, which involves endless blue skies, the beauty of the Alps, and a never-ending succession of mountain passes. Some of them slow, some fast, but all of them beautifully surfaced and very pretty. Riding around Garmisch a couple of months ago meant tens of thousands of riders descending on southern Bavaria for the annual BMW Motorrad Days Festival. 
But fortunately, I only ever had to wait a few minutes before the roads would clear again. And I could get on with enjoying this bike in a part of the world that feels like it's been designed as the ultimate XR playground. The S1000XR is a new niche for BMW, but not for motorcycling as a whole. You see, Ducati got here first, when, five years ago, it gave us the Multistrada. BMW calls the XR an adventure sport model, combining the ergonomics of the 1200 GS with the sportiness of the S1000 package. To be fair though, Triumph's Tiger, Kawasaki's Versus and even Honda's Crosstourer could also be considered earlier arrivals in this class of Shall we call them crossover bikes? But to be sure, with big fat road rubber, the only adventure the XR is interested in is covered with tar. In terms we're used to, this is very much a sport tourer, with the emphasis on sport rather than touring. Don't get me wrong, this is a seriously comfortable bike whose adjustable riding position and screen can deliver many happy hours of gentle sightseeing. But, remember, underneath the vaguely adventure styling is the same engineering that gave us the naked S1000R and the double R Superbike. The XR might be the third S model, but I have to say I reckon it's the best yet. And not just because it wants to wheelie everywhere like a proper Superbike. 160 horsepower tends to do that to a bike, so it's nice to know that the XR has always got your back with a selection of riding aids, including an adjustable traction control system, cornering ABS, dynamic electric suspension adjustment, and a selection of riding modes that give you four different presets. It's a bit like choosing what mood you want the bike to be in. In rain mode, you get a meek and mild, sensible librarian. At the other end of the scale, it's a hedge fund manager with Tourette's and a bad hangover. In this mode, otherwise known as Dynamic Pro, it's simply a very comfortable, very capable superbike. With panniers and heated grips, a quick shifter, auto blip down change, navigation, onboard computer, 